Stroke is currently the number one cause of death and disability in Indonesia. What is stroke and how can it be prevented? What factors greatly influence it? Let's talk about it today. Stroke is a clinical syndrome in which there is a disturbance of blood flow in the brain. It can occur due to blockage or occur due to bleeding that gives symptoms depending on the area of the brain affected. Also depending on the region of the brain that is affected. And this happens suddenly. There are no signs at all, but the attack occurs immediately. The impact of stroke on nerves depends on which area of the brain is affected. If the motor region is affected, paralysis occurs. If the sensory region is affected, there will be sensory disturbances, numbness, tingling, and even spontaneous pain. If affected by memory impairment, sudden forgetfulness may occur. If it turns out to be affected by speech nerve disorders, someone becomes slurred, becomes slow, and many depend on which area of the brain is affected. So the risk factors for stroke are divided into two. The first kind is risk factors that cannot be modified. For example, the first one is genetic. If there is a family history, whether their parents might had stroke or maybe grandparents, uncle, aunt who had a stroke, then the possibility of having a stroke is greater than people who do not have this first genetic risk. The second is age. As age increases, the likelihood of having stroke is greater than those at a younger age. The third is gender. The male gender is more likely to have a stroke at a productive age than female. And then the fourth is people who have had a stroke before will be more likely to have a subsequent stroke. Those are the ones that cannot be modified. Then we have some that can be modified. First, for example, people with hypertension, they can be treated. People with diabetes mellitus can be controlled. People with high cholesterol can be prevented. People with smoking, drinking alcohol, then blood viscosity. A lot of lifestyles can be prevented to avoid the occurrence of stroke. To prevent these modifiable risk factors, most often the reality is lifestyle or how people live their everyday lives. This lifestyle is most often due to diet or their eating behavior. The second is laziness or no movement. Those who rarely move or usually sit and sleep all day must beware. So, this is what most often causes diseases that result in getting stroke. The first is that we need to maintain our diet and body weight. This diet is consuming food that is low in carbohydrates and low in fat. The food that can be consumed is very selected and also try to consume enough fiber and fruits. This is very healthy for us because this is also related to what we call metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is when people who have a bad diet will cause central obesity or fat in the abdominal area. So we have to take care. Well, research says that people who have this central obesity are more likely to have a stroke. So we have to maintain our diet. This means that when food is consumed, the food really has to be used and the excess calories must be burned. So don't let calories accumulate inside your body. The trick is to exercise, to move, okay? Don't be a lazy person. Don't say you don't want to move or exercise. Don't just say we don't want to exercise because we don't have time, but try and make time to exercise. People who have high cholesterol are prone to stroke. But it's not sudden cholesterol. So this cholesterol occurs due to buildup, accumulation. So if the cholesterol is high for a long time, it will cause fat accumulation on the walls of blood vessels, especially damaged blood vessels. So if this damaged blood vessel has a buildup, it gradually blocks the blood flow. This is where the stroke occurs. foods that should be avoided to prevent the risk of stroke. The first is foods that contain high salt content because this high salt content will cause an increase in blood pressure. The, this high salt content is often found in fast foods or junk food and also preserved foods. So be careful even though it doesn't taste salty, it might have high salt or sodium levels. Then of course the second is foods that are high in fat ingredients. Okay. 
high fat here for example foods that contain coconut milk all kinds of things that can cause increased cholesterol levels but of course elevated cholesterol levels alone are not enough to cause a stroke directly but it must be over a long period of time and there is damage to the blood vessels due to other causes. If a person experiences a stroke attack, then there are several signs that they can feel. There are several steps we can look out for in stroke patients. The first one is how they smile. Their smile becomes asymmetrical. In other words, this person has a slanted mouth. Then the second we can look at is their movement. The movement becomes asymmetrical. There is paralysis or immobility on one side of the body, maybe only in their right side, hands and feet as well or maybe only their left side only, then we can hear how they talk. The speech suddenly becomes slurred, or suddenly it's difficult for them to speak, or the speech doesn't make sense because they're talking nonsense, or suddenly they cannot understand conversations. We must look out for this. Next is feeling of numbness. Numbness or tingling sensation. So a person who experiences sudden numbness on one side of the body, is likely to have a stroke. Next one is myopic, on the side of the eye, and it appears suddenly. Then the last one is a sudden severe headache. Now these are the signs of a stroke. And if this happens, don't do anything to it and go straight to the hospital. Because honestly, there's nothing that can be done at home. Once again, there is nothing that can be done at home. You have to go to the hospital. First of all, if a stroke occurs, never prick the finger or the ear. Like the myth we might have heard, that is a lie. Secondly, do not give them anything to drink because they might choke on their drink. Why? There can be paralysis of the swallowing muscles which results in severe lung inflammation, which is fatal, and we definitely do not want that. So they have to be taken to the hospital. Now, at the hospital, the patient will be accessed or reassessed by the doctor, confirming this is a stroke and knowing the type, whether caused by bleeding or blockage, because this therapy is very different. And if it's done quickly, less than four and a half hours from the time of the incident until admission to the hospital, then the chances of complete recovery are much greater and the disability rate will be much smaller. This is all about habits that trigger stroke. I am Dr. Ziki Yombana, a neurologist. See you in the next content.